This is the starting of equilibrium. So we are going to introduce two terms first. The first one is irreversible reaction, and the second one is reversible reaction. For the irreversible reaction, we have learned a lot so far. They are the reaction that can go only one way. For example, a sodium metal react with water to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. In this reaction, the forward reaction is no problem. But if you want to get in the reverse way, react sodium hydroxide and hydrogen to get back the sodium metal and water, and that is impossible. That means there is no reverse reaction. As the reaction goes one way only, that means all the reactant will become product eventually. This is only a matter of time. If the reactant consumed, then the reaction stops. How about the reversible reaction? That means the reaction can start at both ways. For example here, water and steam is a good example. So you can boil the water into steam, or you can condense the steam into liquid water. That means you can start the reaction by both ways. Similarly, calcium oxide can absorb carbon dioxide to form calcium carbonate and you can do it in reverse way to get back the calcium oxide. Next, let me introduce the equilibrium. Equilibrium means there is no more change in concentration in both reactant and the product. If we cannot change the concentration of reactant and the product, well, easy. If the reaction stops, then it's okay. For example, here, the cow is dead. It cannot move anymore. We can say the activity stops. In reaction, we call this static equilibrium. But how about we can unchange the concentration of reactant and product? At the same time, the reaction goes on. Well, the answer is if the reaction can go in both ways. If the forward reaction rate got the same as the backward reaction rate, then there is no net change. For example, the forward reaction consumes 5 reactants, but the backward reaction gives you 5 reactants back. Then, the net change is zero. We call such kind of equilibrium dynamic. Here shows a picture I think can help you understand. Now, this gentleman is running really hard. He's trying to move forward. That is forward reaction rate, of course, not equal to zero. But at the same time, the hamster wheel moves backward. When the backwards speed, same as though the man move hard, but he never change his position. This is also called dynamic equilibrium. Forward and backward reaction rate not equal to zero, but there is no net change in concentration. These two graphs is very important, so please pay attention. For the left-hand side is the concentration against time for static equilibrium. As I mentioned before, Eventually, all the reactants will become product. So you can see the red line is reactant. The reactant's concentration keep going downward. But at the same time, the product move upward. But for the right-hand side, the dynamic equilibrium, the reactant's concentration will become stable at certain point and do not change anymore. Similarly, the product will increase at the first moment. But after a certain time, the concentration of product also becomes stable and do not change anymore. So you can conclude in dynamic equilibrium, both reactant and product's concentration will not equal to zero eventually. Next one, we try to study the graph between reaction rate against time. For the static equilibrium, there is only one line, is the forward reaction. As the reactant's concentration drops, the forward reaction rate also drops, and eventually, the reaction rate becomes zero, that is, the reaction stop. For the right-hand side, dynamic equilibrium. At the first time, the forward reaction rate decrease. At the same time, the backward reaction rate increase because the product's concentration rise up gradually. So the backward reaction rate also increase. Finally, both forward and backward reaction rate equal to a certain point, but this certain point do not equal to zero. There is no net change for the concentration anymore. Before the end of this section, let me emphasize, the dynamic equilibrium must occur in a closed system. Because if we allow the particle move in and move out continuously, the equilibrium state will never achieve. Whenever there is 
addition or removal of reactant or product, a new equilibrium state should be set up again. And we will discuss it in next session. Take this as example. Liquid water will have a dynamic equilibrium with the steam. So after you wash your clothes, if you put it in the washing machine, this is a closed system. That means the liquid water will have equilibrium with the steam. As we mentioned before, both reactant and product concentration will not equal to zero. That means liquid water will exist forever. That means your clothes will never dry. But if you put your clothes under sunshine or open area, liquid water will turn to gaseous one continuously. And eventually, all the liquid water will gone and the clothes is dry completely.